This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, January 20. Hi, me and Amor Mokri. We swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Barbados according to law. So help me God. I, me and Amor Mokri, do swear that I will be faithful and loyal to Barbados and I will uphold the Constitution and the law. And I further swear that I will conscientiously, impartially, and to the best of my ability, discharge my duties as Prime Minister. So help me God. And with that oath, Mia Motley became the ninth Prime Minister of Barbados after a clean sweep of all 30 seats in Wednesday's general elections. Following the brief ceremony at State House, which also included the swearing-in of Attorney General Dale Marshall, she announced that she will act as Health Minister over the next few days. She will, however, name a new cabinet on Monday that will feature some changes. We are clear that we have to be transformational, and therefore I do expect to have to make some changes to the structure of how government works. I've already spoken on the campaign trail um, about the fact that we need the people's assemblies to be more responsive to the people of the nation, especially in the delivery of services. And I believe that the office of the Prime Minister has become more and more, my press secretary is here and he will tell you that regrettably he has had to be a jack of all trades because in a very real sense, the office of the Prime Minister is seen as that place where all complaints ultimately come for all aspects of things, public and private. So we are given serious thought to how best to structure that and may make some innovations in there. Meanwhile, Motley assured that her new government will represent the interests of all Barbadians and abide by the principles of transparency and accountability. We are buoyed by, by it, we are humbled by the confidence, but I must tell you, it places a tremendous burden um, and I have given the commitment, I gave it on the 27th of May 2018 and I give it again now that I have to be the government's chief opposition when necessary because the one thing I know is that I must not in any way breach the oath of office that I just took and that the people of this country must always know that the fairness which they value, the accountability which they need, and the transparency which is required will always be part and parcel of the functioning of this government. Attorney General Dale Marshall signaled that the government is ready to get on with the business of running the country's affairs. We left a lot of things still to be done and I assure you that immediately uh, we will get to the heavy duties of carrying on with the business of government. Face-to-face -face classes are set to resume on a phased basis on February 21, according to a release from the Ministry of Education. Given the exponential increase in the number of COVID-19 cases, particularly in persons under the age of 18, public health authorities have advised that it's safer for students to return to the classroom after the number of infections has peaked and there is a steady decline in the number of cases over a given period. The ministry said that while education officials recognize the importance of in-person interaction, the safety of students, teachers, and other school staff remain paramount. In today's COVID-19 update, the death toll moves to 273 after two persons died from the viral illness. A 33-year-old unvaccinated man and a 63-year-old fully vaccinated woman both died from the virus at the Harrison Point facility. A total of 559 people, that's 251 males and 308 females, tested positive for the viral illness on Wednesday from 2,165 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The number of people in isolation facilities is 123, while 5,992 are in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother. I'm a daughter and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. 
And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. On the regional front, the Bahamas Christian Council is slamming government for what it has described as an underhanded attempt to push through an agenda that would fast forward the legalization of marijuana. The Christian Council blasting Agriculture Minister Clay Sweeting and the Progressive Liberal Party government for attempting to expedite the introduction of a cannabis industry in the Bahamas. The council's president, Bishop Delton Fernandez, says something just doesn't seem right about it. So this is a very powerful special interest movement that the first thing a new government wants to do in an effort to move our economy forward is cannabis. We have to wake up and see that there are powerful movement going on in our society that transcends governments. And he says the Christian Council refuses to remain silent. We will vigorously fight like we did in opposition to certain points of legislation and they were respected. Uh, we expect the same out of the government of the day. Now, as far as the leader of the opposition, Michael Pintard, is concerned, he's trying to figure out exactly why government is attempting to move full steam ahead with a document relative to the cannabis industry without proper consultation with the opposition and various stakeholders. We have not seen the nature of the legislation that they're going to present. Are they going to present the ones that we left on the table or are they going to make substantial amendments? We do not know. On the international scene, a long awaited report on sexual abuse in Germany's Munich diocese has faulted retired Pope Benedict's handling of several cases when he was Archbishop in the 1970s and 1980s. Former Pope Benedict XVI has been heavily incriminated in a new report on the handling of child sex abuse allegations in the Catholic Church in Munich when he was the Archbishop Cardinal Ratzinger. The four cases came to light when Ratzinger was Cardinal in Munich from 1977 to 1982, before becoming the head of Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. We have come to the conclusion that the then Archbishop Cardinal Ratzinger is to be accused of misconduct in the cases of sexual abuse. The 94-year-old, who resigned as Pope nearly 10 years ago, denies the accusations. In 2018, a church commissioned report found at least 3,677 people were abused by clergy in Germany between 1946 and 2014. More than half of the victims were 13 years or younger, and nearly a third served as altar boys. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.